Uh, we'll look at a few verses here. Uh, verse number seven. And lest I should be exalted above measure, we're jumping into this, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, and reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Just thinking about this passage of Scripture and just looking at it, and uh, Paul's writing here, and he says, And lest I should be exalted, in verse number, it's number 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure. And then he says it again there at the end of it, Lest I should be exalted above measure. If life was good for us all, we would get so prideful in it that Paul, we would be like Paul and we would be exalted above measure. And you say, what's that mean? Look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. Look at what I've been able to do. But because of, and then he says, there was a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. And Paul says, look, I was given this thorn in this flesh. And he says, so that I would not be exalted above measure. So that I would have to say, man, this thing hurts. And the only reason I'm going forward is but by the grace of God. And to be hit again and again and again. And he says, well, what? And you come down to verse 8. And he said, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He said, Lord, I don't like this thorn in the flesh. I don't like this thorn in the side. I don't like this. And... And what Paul's saying is, he's look, look, if I didn't have this, I could do more. If I didn't have this, I, I, I could maybe go on a little bit further. And God says, no, it's not what I want. He says in verse 9, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. I, I don't know, and people don't know what the thorn in the flesh is, but I was just I, I was thinking about this. And that exalted above measure. God, if you're going to, if I'm going to stand in front of these people, then I'm going to have to have your strength today. God, if I'm going to stand, hey God, if I'm going to, God, we've got, got a few miles to go down the road today. And Lord, I just ain't ready to roll out of bed this morning. And I, we don't know what Paul's thorn in the flesh is, but I can imagine the physical side of it, him getting to that point where he says, Lord, if you don't strengthen me, we're not going. Lord, if you don't strengthen me, then I, I can't accomplish this. Lord, if you don't give me the rest, then I can't accomplish this. And, and, and that's where I believe, and you say, why? Because if Paul didn't have that, Paul's going to be like, yeah, look at what I did. Be able to stick out his chest, be able to puff it out, be able to go look at what I was able to accomplish. Hey, we went 50 miles down the road today. We was able to speak to 10,000 in the crowd today. My voice, man, it was good this morning. It was good all through that message. But I could imagine, and you say, what, why are you getting that? Because just like we are as men, Lord, my voice is about shot today. If you don't do something, this isn't going to get accomplished. And when we do it, then we have to turn around and say, fellas, my voice was shot before I got up there. My voice was shot after I got up there. The only way that got accomplished was through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you say, what is that? Well, that's where the Lord comes through and says, I give you the strength. I can give it to you so that when we get done with whatever we're doing that day, we look at it and say, no, it wasn't us. Because to be honest with you, I didn't feel like it this morning. It wasn't us because my, my ankles were hurting, my legs were hurting, my back was hurting, whatever was hurting on the Apostle Paul. And you can read, he's got a plethora of things that were hurting on his body. I mean, you think about thrice beaten with rods and night, I mean, shipwrecked. I mean, I, I don't know if he maybe had something, you know, he's beaten, he's been stoned and those things and his face and tore up and but it, the Bible says verse number nine my strength my grace is sufficient for thee the Lord says I'll give you the strength my strength is made perfect in weakness it's when you're weak Paul that I am strong it is when you're weak that I can look at it now verse number 10 uh, let's look at the latter part of verse number nine most gladly therefore will I glory in my infirmities that the power of God may Christ may rest upon me Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Paul's a nut right here. We would look at Paul and say, Paul, you're crazy. You say, well, why do you get that? Because I take pleasure in my infirmities. 
in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Paul, you, you're, you, you enjoy those things. Paul, you, you take pleasure in those things. Paul, looked, Paul got to the point where he looked beyond the physical and he looked at the spiritual side of it and said, look, I'm going to rejoice in it because I'm going to look beyond the immediate. I'm going to look beyond the fact that right now I'm hurting. Right now I'm in trouble. Right now I'm doing, I, 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 my, my back is hurting. My, my head's hurting from when that rock hit me about six years ago. My, my, my Whatever it is, Paul said, I'm going to look past that and I'm going to see Christ's glory. I'm going to see and say, Lord, what are you going to accomplish today, Father? I'm going to look past that and say, you know what? I may not understand it now, but I'll understand it later. You think about the epistles that Paul wrote while he was sitting in a jail cell. You, you think about Paul and Silas there in that jail cell there in the Philippian jail. And they're looking at one another. I don't know. I, I can't remember exact chronological uh, time frame on this but I can imagine Paul maybe even looking back as he's writing to the Corinthians going you know what I remember seeing the power of God work because of the afflictions that we had gone through a man and his family got saved a young lady uh, uh, because a young lady we cast out the devil we got thrown in prison we got beaten and then a man and his family what, what greater glory to that and we don't know how many people got saved after that because of that jail Paul looks at it and says, you know what? I'm going to glory in my infirmities. Yes, I may be beaten. Yes, I may be in stocks. Yes, I may have a, a Roman guard standing right there at my door. But you know what? I've got my pen and parchment today. And I may not be able to get out and herald out the gospel like I used to be able to. But there's a young man by the name of Timothy and there's a young man by the name of Titus and they need a little bit of exhortation. And there's other epistles that we call Paul's prison epistles. And I can imagine if he's writing there, he has no idea that the Holy Ghost of God is inspiring him to put these words to paper. And in that, it goes into the canonization of Scripture that we have today a couple thousand years later. Mm -hmm. All because a man thrown in jail you think about this one and I know it's not the Bible but you think about Pilgrim's Progress and some of John Bunyan's works it was because Bunyan was in jail it wasn't because he was sitting out there uh, uh, being able to preach the gospel. It wasn't because he was sitting out there being able to uh, talk, go and visit with his congregation It wasn't, and, and the, the, uh, the different people that he needed to. No, it was because he was thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. And he took up pen and put pen to paper and gave us probably one of the greatest books outside the Bible known to man, Pilgrim's Progress. Because he looked past. He, like Paul, I believe, looked past the immediate infirmities of what's God got for me and gives God the glory on the other side of it. My friends, today, as we look at the different things that we go through in life, the different uh, infirmities, the different approaches, the different necessities, whatever it is that we go through in life, and I think sometimes we look at it and go, oh, woe is me. But look, and if, we can, if I can say it like this, but you, we have to... If you can't look beyond it, look up. You say, well, the storm clouds are there. But yes, but you know who's on the other side of the clouds. Look up. You say, why? Because you're looking to him. Heard it again last night. Never doubt in the night what God gives you in the light. You say, what do you mean? You know God's there. If you can't, and I, if you can't look this way, and many times in life we cannot see this way. Look that way because we know who's on the other side. And you say, well, we can't see him. No, but we know he's there. Yes. And we're looking towards the author and the finisher of our faith. So whatever we're going through in life, whatever it is, and Paul says, therefore, I take, take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's then we're able to show what God can do. It's then that we're able to give the witness and be able to help somebody else down the road. We don't know. We're going to help 5, 10, 15 years later. But God does. God knows why. And God knows what we're going to be able to do. So as tough as it may seem, let's take glory or let's take pleasure.
pleasure in our infirmities. Dear Father, we thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for the time to be here this morning. Lord, thank you for the words. I pray that you take it and use it to honor and glory today. In Jesus' name we pray.